was actually my birthday a couple of days ago on April 16th. I turned 35. Oh my God, my Tamagotchi is hatching. I turned 35 and my Tamagotchi is hatching. What a, what a wild ride. So anyways, that's a spoiler for something that I did pick up. I did end up getting some video games from some of my friends and I also ended up picking up some on my own because we all, I'm sure we all do that. We all end up buying ourselves our own gifts and things like that. And in addition to my birthday, I also did go to PAX East about a month or so ago at this point and there were a lot of video games that were on my wish list and I ended up picking up a few of those and I will end up sharing all of like the Steam pickups. It's, a, it's like a mixed bag of things in this video. There's like 3DS, there's Switch, there's a PC game, and there's Lego, there's a lot. So anyways, I'm just going to shut up and I'm going to just start talking about what I picked up. First thing I picked up is not all that exciting, but I did end up getting a box for my Happy Home Designer Animal Crossing game for the 3DS. I just got this off of eBay. I want to say it was like $7. It didn't come with a guide or anything. It was just the case, but to be honest, that's totally fine with me. Okay, I'm going to have to figure out how to turn this Tamagotchi off. I'm sorry, are you hungry? Should I feed you? But like I was saying, oh. In my 3DS collection video, this was one of the 3DS games that I had that was just, I didn't have a box for, so I ended up picking up one for cheap. And the next game that I ended up picking up was actually Pokemon X for the Nintendo 3DS. As I get older, I realize that I just want to do the things that I do every day on my birthday, but like without the guilt, if that makes sense. I think I just pretty much played games. I sat on the couch and I just played games until about like three or four o'clock at night. And then around like 4.30, 5 o'clock, I got this itch to go out of the house and get something for dinner as well as just run to a local store called The Exchange. I think I talked about this in my 3DS collection video, but it's a chain of stores that we have in Pennsylvania. Video games, records, there's, there's a whole like plethora of stuff that they have in that store. And the nice thing about that store is that whenever it's your birthday, or like your birthday month, you get 20% off of anything used in the store. So I ended up picking up Pokemon X because I don't have it. And it was one of those Pokemon games that I wanted to pick up. I wanted to pick up either X or Y. I never played this one. And it ended up being about $30 with my discount as well as like some rewards points that I had. So it was actually a pretty good price, all things considered. So that's it for like the 3DS stuff. So next up, I will start with some Switch games that I got. And the first one is called Haven. Now this game I got from PAX East. And this game I've already already played on the Switch. I got it off of the eShop and it was like 10 bucks or so. But whenever I saw that Limited Run had an actual physical copy of this game, I was like, yes, I'm going to pick this up. I really, really enjoyed this. This game is like a mix of a visual novel as well as exploration. And the way that you explore in this game is actually really fun and kind of relaxing. The music in this game is also really, really nice and chill. Whenever I originally played this, I was playing it like I played it like an hour or so before bed and it was always nice to just kind of like wind down, get a little bit more of the story and just kind of scoot around like you do in the game. So I definitely recommend this if you have not tried it. And then this next one was one that I wasn't really planning on picking up and I actually started playing it on the Steam Deck, but it is Octopath Traveler 2. Now I was always really like entranced with the art style of Octopath Traveler, like the original one, but I heard that it was like really grindy and it wasn't optimized well or whatever. But whenever I saw everyone kind of like raving about Octopath Traveler 2 and I found out that you don't need to play the first one, I was like, hmm, okay, I'm a little bit more interested in this game. So I originally downloaded the demo first on my Steam Deck and played about the first hour and a half to two hours on there. And I really, really ended up enjoying it. And normally what I would do is I would just end up buying the game on Steam and playing it there. But my sister got me an Amazon gift card for my birthday, so I decided to use it on Octopath Traveler 2. And now I'm obviously playing it on Switch. It's a little bit harder than I thought it would be, and I'm not very good at it yet. This is gonna be a long one to beat. This will probably be one that I'm playing for a while at this point because I'm not very good at JRPGs. <laughs> and then the final game that I picked up for Switch was one where I bought it for myself for my birthday, and that is Cult of the Lamb, the Deluxe Edition. So much fun. I ended up playing the DLC, played that at PAX East, and I had a lot of fun with that. I'm not very good at it, but that's why I play video games, to get better at them and see the growth that I have after it. The art style is just so cute and the gameplay is really addictive, especially just going into the dungeons and continually getting more and more resources and all that. And I'm actually really excited to play the expansion whenever that comes out in a couple of days. Now this is another one of those games that I've already played before. I actually played it on my Steam Deck. I would say it's like a mix of Animal Crossing with like a dungeon crawler slash roguelike, where basically you are forming a cult. And every time that you go into the dungeons, you're basically trying to gain resources, for your cult as well as recruit new followers to the cult. And whenever you're actually back at your cult, this sounds so weird to talk about without like the, the reference of it being a video game. You build shelters for all of your cultists and followers and you have to like clean up poop and vomit and all. It, this is this is not a very good explanation of Cult of the Lamb, but I absolutely love this game. And, and the music, the music is so good too. Like, oh my God, it's, it's incredible. It's a good one. 
very fun. Can't wait for more on April 24th. So that's it for all of the Nintendo Switch and 3DS stuff that I had. And the next thing that I picked up is actually a PC game. I ended up picking up the Mass Effect 2 Collector's Edition for PC on eBay a couple of weeks ago. Mass Effect 2 is one of my favorite games of all time. And I'm pretty confident in saying that it might be my number one of all time. And getting the actual original Mass Effect 2 for PC, like the original release back in 2010, that was always something that was on my list. And I just had been putting it off and putting it off and I was like oh I don't want to spend the money and whatever and I actually had like three or so listings on eBay that were in my save for later or whatever and I started to notice that the prices were going up so when I originally put them in there I think it was like $15 or something and then they had been bumped up to $25 so the like combination of my birthday and the prices going up I just finally pulled the trigger and ended up buying this you don't see boxed PC games anymore and it's it's one of those things where I really regret getting rid of a lot of the box games that I had I never had Mass Effect box because because whenever I played it, it was like in 2016, I downloaded it from Steam and played it on my PC. There's just so many games that I played in the past, like World of Warcraft and Burning Crusade and Final Fantasy 14. Like I had boxes for them and I just, I think I just, I just threw them out at one point and I really, really regret that. So I'm really glad to have this into my collection because it's the OG. I feel like I should have a physical copy of my favorite game of all time in my collection. And before I get into like the Steam games that I picked up this month, as well as like some DLC, I just did want to show you some of the random things that I picked up that aren't really games, but also kind of game adjacent. And one of them you heard earlier on in the video, and that is a Tamagotchi. I don't remember exactly why, but one day a few weeks ago, I was like, I really want a Tamagotchi because I never had one of these whenever I was a kid. I had the Gigapet which I also ended up buying. This is the dog version. And like, I loved the Gigapet whenever I was little, but I always, always, always wanted a Tamagotchi. I didn't know that they still make them. And my Tamagotchi poops, so I have to clean it up. And then my husband also got me the Lego Tall Deck from Horizon Forbidden West. The machines in Horizon Forbidden West and Horizon Zero Dawn are just perfectly like made for Lego sets. So I'm really excited to have this tall neck and get to building it. I really do enjoy building Legos. I just don't get the time to do it enough because Legos are expensive and also whenever they're done they they take up space and I guess to like segue out of that I can talk about the DLC that I bought recently which is the Burning Shores DLC for Horizon Forbidden West I actually just started playing it last night on April 19th after having so many issues actually getting the stupid DLC to download I'm only about like an hour and a half to two hours into the game and wow I have 100% forgotten how to play Horizon Forbidden West it was it was a very messy hour and a half for two hours so I'm really excited to see more of Aloy and experience more of her story and yeah I will report back whenever I finish that and let you guys know what I think about it. And then finally, I just wanted to talk really quick about some of the Steam game pickups that I got this past month. So two of my friends actually were super nice and ended up gifting me a copy of Pyre by Supergiant Games, as well as Spirit of the North. I haven't played Spirit of the North yet, but it is similar to Journey, at least that's what I'm told. It's about a fox and obviously Vault Fox. I love anything with foxes in it. The art looks great, but I have played Pyre and I'm really, really enjoying Pyre. It's definitely different than Supergiant Games that I've played in the past, which I've only played one, which is Hades. I loved Hades. I love the art style and I just love their, I just love everything about what Supergiant Games does. Again, their art style is just super unique. The music is always great and the characters are always super interesting. The way it was described to me was like, you're kind of playing football, but with like three people. And at first I was like, what? But no, it, it's kind of, it's kind of true. Like you're kind of playing these like mini games of football, which are called rights in this game, interspersed with like exploration, as well as some visual novel elements of learning about these characters. And the rest of the games I'm going to talk about, they were all games that I ended up picking up because of PAX East. So the first two games that I picked up, they were both from a publisher called Finji. The first one I haven't played yet, but it is called I Was a Teenage Exocolonist. I did play a little bit of it on the floor at PAX, and it, it's definitely one of those ones where you kind of have to hear the music and read a lot. So I played a little bit and I was like, okay, this, se this seems like a game that I would enjoy. So I ended up grabbing it from the booth, and I just haven't played it at home yet because I was playing the other game that I played from Finji, which is called Tunic. You might have seen this game. It's got a really cutesy art style and it's got a really cutesy fox with like a sword and a shield and I actually beat this game and I actually had a lot of fun with like the first couple hours with this game because it, it kind of rewards you for like exploring and trying things and trying to figure out like the mechanics of the game because the game doesn't tell you anything. Basically what you have to do throughout the game is pick up all of these instruction pages for the instruction booklet and then through that you're kind of learning more about the world and how things work and I had I had fun with that for like a good couple of hours and then at some point it just like hit this wall of being like so hard and 
I don't know how anyone gets through this game without a video game guide. Like, I just, I don't trust people that say that they got through this without a guide. I'm not gonna lie, like, the, the ending of the game kind of didn't leave me very satisfied, but I'm glad that I finished it and I'm glad that I played it because it was a very cute art style and I just, I just love that little stupid fox. He's, he's adorable. And another game that I grabbed on recommendation from my friend Teresa was Potion Craft. And this game is my before sleep game if I need to wind down because all you're doing is you're operating a shop and you're making potions and that's it and it's just so relaxing the way that you actually make the potions is really interactive like you kind of move your potion around a map it's just very visual and not like a lot of reading and all that stuff and i really enjoy it it's just it's very relaxing it's a very nice game to play right before bed and then the last thing that i wanted to talk about i actually don't have in hand but i'm really really excited about it because i i just never had a device like this i actually picked up the miu mini plus the 64 gig version and if you're not familiar with what that is that is actually a portable emulation device and i've been really getting into to wanting to play Game Boy Advance games as well as like NES, Super NES, and stuff that I played whenever I was a child that requires me to actually hook a console up to a TV. But because I prefer handheld gaming, I was really interested in grabbing some type of emulation device that I could play those types of games on. I'm, I'm really excited to get this device and I'll do like an unboxing and talking all about it whenever I get it. But yeah, really excited to play some Game Boy Advance games on there. I know emulation isn't for everyone, but I do enjoy like both sides of it. I love collecting the actual physical games, but the reality is is that, you know, I want to play the original Fire Emblem and Binding Blade and there's there's just a lot of stuff on the Game Boy Advance library that I never played because I didn't have one. And there's even like some Pokemon games on there that I haven't played. I don't know how you guys feel about emulation, but I'm willing to give it a go if I can play some of these, you know, awesome games that I just don't have access to because my god, trying to buy a copy of Fire Emblem for Game Boy Advance is just I'm not I I don't I can't, that, that's too much money. Let me know if there are any games in here that you are interested in me talking more about whenever I get to them. And let me know what you guys are playing down below. I love to hear what everyone is playing, especially whenever it comes to playing all of these like older games. It's always just so fascinating to me and you really learn a lot about a person by the games that they play, at least I feel. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys.